Okay, so we were discussing the glide of uh, different dislocations and in respect to that we said that for edge the glide plane which is defined as the plane containing B and U is unique. So, the edge dislocation cannot move out of the plane by glide, it can move out by climb, but if we are talking only about glide it cannot, it cannot move out. However, for a screw dislocation B and U are parallel, so there may be several planes which contain B and U and are also uh, acceptable slip plane. Therefore, B uh, the screw dislocation if we are talking about a screw pure screw dislocation it can cross glide and we showed that example here. So, if this is a screw dislocation this is 1 1 1 and uh, you can find out that 1 bar 1 1 contains the same B and U and therefore, it can cross, cross glide from this 1 1 1 to 1 bar 1 1. So, that is about a pure edge and pure screw. Now, the question is what about mixed dislocations? So, it may seem like since mixed is uh, on the on the face of it, it would look like mixed dislocations contain edge dislocation and therefore, it may not be possible for mixed dislocations to cross glide, but let us see what really happens. And as you would uh, realize that the way I am projecting it, there must be something different from what we are expecting and it is true that actually the mixed dislocations do cross glide. So, again here I am drawing three different planes. So, these are planes meaning here as you can see I am drawing it like a continuous uh, what is called as uh, non discrete plane, but in reality you must realize that these are actually formed out of atoms. So, there are atoms sitting over here and just that these this particular plane this particular plane are dense densely packed you remember 1 1 1 which is the f the slip plane for FCC is supposed to be a densely packed and interplanar spacing is supposed to be higher. So, this is one plane the other one would be much higher above it much lower than than this, but this but these planes on it itself would be very densely packed. So, do not think that this when I draw a plane it is like a plane uh, as a floor it is not really that it is an imaginary plane composed out of atoms. So, now let us uh, move and look at a dislocation. Okay. So, this is our mixed dislocation and let us say the Berger vector is like this which let us say for this particular case happens to be bar 1 0 1. And this is this plane is 1 1 1 or uh, let us call it 1 bar 1, this is 1 1 1 and therefore, this is also 1 1 1. So, now you can see that uh, this one the dot product of these two would be 0, therefore, it means this Berger vector is contained in this and what will be the line vector over here? The line vector here would also be bar 1 0 1. This is the plane, uh, this is the intersection line where the two planes are um, not meeting, but yeah, actually, where the two planes meet. So, you can see that this particular plane, this particular direction is also perpendicular to this one, means this particular direction lies also in 1 bar 1 1 and 1 1 1, and therefore, it is common to these, and this also happens to be our Berger vector. So, now let us look at what happens. So, at this particular point if you look at this particular point, what is the character of dislocation at this point? So, let us call it point P at point P what is the character of the dislocation as you can realize that this particular point is if you remember from our mixed dislocation that even in a loop you will have two points which are pure screw and two points which are pure edge and this particular point as you can see its uh, tangent is parallel to B and therefore, it will be a pure 
screw dislocation. So, now that gives us a window that there is a pure screw dislocation component. Now, let us say this pure screw dislocation component reaches the intersection point that we have shown here. Now, this pure screw dislocation this can surely cross glide. So, it will cross glide like this and once it cross glides it will on the sides of it it will form edge dislocations and this these edge dislocations can move apart like this and it will slowly give it the shape that we had originally. And once it has cross glide then it will again form the shape like this. So, you see the our dislocation which was on this plane has now moved on to this plane. Again if you look at this point which is let us call it this time T. So, this is similar to P and this is also if you take the tangent over here this tangent is uh, par parallel to B the Berger vector here also as you can realize is B equal to the Berger vector of the same dislocation does not change. So, whether it is here or here moves on to the next plane the Berger vector will remain constant it will remain bar 1 0 1 and the line vector which is tangent at this particular point will be parallel to this line which is nothing but bar 1 0 1. So, again this is these two are parallel so this is screw dislocation. So, character of dislocation at point P point T they are all pure screw dislocation and hence when you take it further this is screw dislocation this is screw dislocation can this screw dislocation can cross glide into this and once it cross glides that is uh, edge dislocations would start to move. So, what do we see here? cross glide or cross which is the more appropriate term for this is cross slip, cross slip of mixed dislocation. And why was it made possible? It was made possible because there is pure screw character at some point. Now, let us do a little bit of uh, brainstorming and ask let me ask you if if Berger vector was equal to not 1 bar 1 0 1, but let us say if it was 0 bar 1 1, then would it cross slip on to 1 bar 1 1. So, what do you think if the Berger vector is this? So, right now we had this Berger vector and it was uh, able to cross slip onto 1 bar 1 1. Now, I am asking I am just changing the Berger vector can would it cross slip onto this particular plane. So, as you would uh, how would you find out? So, first thing is that what will cross slip is a screw dislocation. So, let us see what will be the line vector of the screw dislocation line vector of the screw dislocation will also have to be 0 bar 1 1. Now, this 0 bar 1 1 must lie on 1 1 1 as well on 1 bar 1 1. So, 0 bar 1 1 if you take the dot product with 1 1 1 it is equal to 0. So, this does lie on 1 1 1 but dot product with 1 bar 1 1 what will this give? So, you see this will become 1 plus 1 into 1 plus 1 and this will minus 1 into minus 1 plus 1. So, it will become 2. So, it is not equal to 0 therefore, this particular direction does not lie on So, the answer is no it cannot cross slip into
1 bar 1 1. Okay, so, next uh, let me ask you is a continuation of this question that it cannot cross slip onto 1 bar 1 1, but can it cross slip at all. So, the next part of the question is can this dislocation where the Berger vector is 0 bar 1 1 cross slip at all. Okay, so, first instinct that you should get is that why should this particular dislocation be different from this dislocation. This particular dislocation which had a Berger vector bar 1 0 1 is able to cross slip. Is there anything special about it? No. Then why should this particular dislocation not be able to cross slip? So, the first uh, instinctive answer should be yes it should be able to cross slip, but, the, but then the question would be on to what plane and the answer would be easy all you have to do is again look at this u you have to find out what is the plane that what is one of the other 1 1 1 plane that contains 0 bar 1 1. So, one of the plane we already know is 1 1 1 and what will be the other plane. So, you have to find that and it will not be very difficult to see that it would be. So, what we need to do is find a dot product where this and 1 of the 1 1 1 will give you 0 and that is what I am trying to find out and uh, by uh, just first hand rule I am just trying to take the dot product which will give you 0. So, it is just a trial and error method and I am looking at this 1 bar 1 1 dot bar 1 0 1 gives you 0. So, here we have 0 where there is a bar 1. So, here what we need to find is uh, bar 1 in the yes. So, it will be this plane. Okay. So, now you can take the dot product of bar 1 1 1 and 0 bar 1 1. So, you can see this will bar 1 times 0 0 1 into minus 1 minus 1 1 into 1 plus 1. So, the dot product of these two will again give you 0. So, this will cross slip on to bar 1 1 1. So, like I said that the first instinctive answer you should get automatically that there is nothing special about bar 1 0 1. So, yes this should also cross slip and uh, what it will cross slip onto you will find out using what is the line vector that contains uh, sorry this line vector has to be contained in 2 1 1 1 type plane. And this with all these would become easier when we later on look at what is called as Thomson's tetrahedron. So, this gives you all the possible planes. So, if for FCC system, okay, yeah. So, that is something that I forgot or I assumed implicitly that it is we, we are talking about this cross slip in a FCC. This is also possible in BCC, but the planes and directions would be different. So, this remember that this is about FCC because all the directions and planes as you can see uh, are the slip systems for FCC. And for FCC, thankfully, we have a very useful tool which is called Thomson tetrahedron which we will look at when we will talk more about FCC dislocation in more detail. Unfortunately, for BCC and HCP we do not have such uh, handy tool, but nevertheless uh, once you know the once you know the concept you know the mathematics you would be able to find the direction and planes very easily. Now, let us uh, discuss about BCC. So, this was the in the FCC system what about BCC? In BCC, can you see cross slip? And in fact, it so happens that in BCC, cross slip is lot more easier, and in fact, it is much more common in the than in FCC. And what is the reason? The reason is that this 1 1 1, which is the slip direction it is contained in several. Now, you remember uh, okay, so let me remind you here again that for one that BCC we had 1 1 1 as the slip direction and although we said that 1 1 0 is the preferred slip plane, but there are also other slip planes like 1 1 2 and 1 2 3. And 111, this particular 
in any one of this. So, let us say I am talking about 1 bar 1 1 any of this particular direction 1 bar 1 1 is contained in, contained in several of these planes. So, what are these different planes? For example, if I take a simple 1 1 1, then this is contained in bar 1 1 0, it is also contained in bar 1 0 1. So, these are examples for 1 1 0 type of system. It is also contained in 1 1 bar 2, it is contained in 1 bar 2 1, these are examples of 1 1 2 planes. It is also contained in bar 3 1 2, it is also contained in 2 1 bar 3 and these are examples of 1 2 3 planes. And this is not exhaustive, we can have lot more uh, planes over here, we are not uh, going into details of that. It is just to show that yes cross slip is possible, what we needed was that th uh, this particular direction which is the slip direction, if you remember from our example for FCC that this particular slip direction should be contained in more than one plane and that is what we are looking for. So, I show you here that this one is just one direction 1 1 1 can be contained in at least 6, there will be more, we will look at how to exhaust that later on when we talk more about BCC. But uh, for now, you can see that here itself you have 6 different planes and as an example what will happen if you take something like this, let us say we take talk uh, and this cross slip again uh, you have to keep in mind this, this will be possible only for screw dislocation. So, it does not uh, matter whether you are talking about FCC or BCC or HCP cross slip will be only possible for screw dislocation and not for edge dislocation. So, let us say the Berger vector a dislocation with Berger vector 1 1 1 is present somewhere over here. So, this is screw dislocation that I am trying to show and okay, let me draw it a little towards the bottom side, so that I can draw all the planes and what you may experience or what you may observe is that it is slipping or gliding on one particular plane, let us say bar 1 0 1, we know that it contains 1 1 1 and then suddenly because of some obstacle it may move on to another one. So, let us say this is 2 1 3 bar, then again it may move on to, so here So, this is let us say this is 1 1 bar 2 and as you can take a cross product to cross check that this indeed contains uh, that 1 1 1 is indeed contained onto this plane. And then again it may decide to change direction because of some obstacle or change in the stress local stress field and it may move like this and then again it may move like this and then again it may move come back to our original bar 1 0 1. So, the screw dislocation which started from here is still on the bar 1 0 plane, but it has taken a zigzag path or macroscopic, macroscopically how would it look like? It would look like someone has just scribbled a pen pencil. So, it will look like something like this, it is very similar to a pencil scribble and hence a unique name has been given or a uh, particular name has been given to it, it is called pencil glide. Because when you look macroscopically, because it can cross slip into so many planes, it would look like that it is continuously changing direction and there is if someone has scribbled with a pencil, so, so the name pencil glide, which means easy glide of A by 2 1 1 1 on almost not almost any plane, but on many different planes I should say. So, this is uh, the characteristics for BCC cross slip and so far we have talked only about glide. Now, it is time to move on to 
discuss a little bit about climb. And you remember what is climb? Climb is moving of dislocation out of the slip plane. In fact, uh, I should say out of original slip plane because it will still land up in some other slip plane which will be parallel or it can be again one of the other possible slip planes. But when once it is when it is moving that time it is not on any particular slip plane. So, it moves out of the slip plane and then it is it automatically is in uh, still would lie in one of the slip planes. So, you know, the appropriate word would be moving of dislocation out of original slip plane. So, it may be, it was on some slip plane one and then it uh, climbs and then moves on to another slip plane. So, let us uh, look at the phenomena that is involved when climb takes place and we mentioned earlier also that it is uh, because of the involvement of point defects that climb takes place and that is why it is a thermally activated process. So, let us say this is So, where is the dislocation? This is the this represents the dislocation the extra half plane all the way like this and this is the slip plane on this on this particular crystal system that I have shown here. Now, let us say that a vacancy moves into this. So, what will happen to this? So, vacancy moves in which, which means and in this particular case let us say the vacancy is such that it moves on to here and in fact, it is uh, more likely to be here because there is larger space and therefore, it the you can say resistance or the energy of activation required for the movement migration of the vacancy would be lower and so vacancy would be attracted to the core. So, the more likely that the vacancy would move over to this place and once the vacancy moves to this place it would mean that the atom moves out of this place. And so, the final configuration would look something like so there is a vacancy over here and in effect it has caused the dislocation plane to move one one layer above. So, this is when vacancy moves in. Now, what if the vacancy moves out? Okay, so, this is in effect you can say artificial move uh, moving out of vacancy. So, there is no vacancy per se, but let us say that an atom moves here it would result in a vacancy moving out from here onto the bulk side of the sample and therefore, what you would see is something like this. So, the what it has resulted in is the lowering of the uh, extra half plane. So, there is one the plane has moved down and at the same time since an atom has reached here a vacancy would have to move out. So, in effect it has created a vacancy and in this particular case it has absorbed a vacancy. So, you can say that climb also acts as source and sink for vacancies. So, this is why it is also called a non-conservative process the climb because it is 
changing the concentration of vacancies and we are not talking about one or two vacancies there will be order of uh, change uh, or change in order of magnitude for the vacancies. Anyhow, let us come back to our climb process itself. So, when we say that this, this location line has moved from here to one plane above over here, do we mean that all of the dislocation line has climbed simultaneously? Do we mean that in fact, the right the appropriate question would be would all of dislocation line move up or down simultaneously? And the answer would be emphatic no. You would have uh, guessed by now based on our understanding for the glide where we saw the formation of jog that jog takes jog uh, makes the movement of causes the movement of the dislocation and not all of the dislocation line moves simultaneously. Similarly, for the climb it is not the jog, but uh, sorry in the case of uh, glide it was kink in the case of climb it is jog. Okay, let me. So, here it is the formation of jogs. leads to step wise climb up or down. So, this is how the climb would take place. Now, let us understand it in a little bit uh, more detail. So, let us say this is So, let us say this is an extra half plane. Now, this extra half and these are different layers. So, let us say this is an extra half plane and I am not showing the planes beyond this because it will obscure the vision for this one. So, what will happen if it has to move up? So, meaning that we would like uh, this to take place So, this extra half plane has to move up. How would that happen? It will not move all the plane would move simultaneously up or even if you ignore the top part if you just want to take away one layer it does not happen like that. What happens is you form a jog. So, you can see jog is something like jogging up. So, this jog formation takes place and this jog formation once the jog has formed this these steps can move across and lead to the overall displacement of this extra half plane one layer up. And uh, we will come back to this in the next lecture to describe more about climb. So, we will continue with this discussion.